thrifting in Leeward today. I actually can borrow my mother-in-law's car, which is so sweet of her. And I'm at a store that I haven't been to in a very long time. I've only been there once and that was in maybe 2008 or 9. Back then the store kind of creeped me out because it's this kind of storage filled with tons of stuff. But times change, those things no longer creep me out. I'm kind of used to them by now. So I'm back and trying to see if they have some, some good stuff. They um, also sell like kind of weird stuff like actual like speed boats and things I've seen on their site so who knows what I'm gonna find there but I'm super curious to see if they have some good stuff. I definitely don't see a totem pole greeting me at the entrance of a Dutch thrift store every day. You're such a fragile they have a lot of those metal ads at this store, but I felt like these weren't vintage because they just looked too good to be really old. There are also a ton of leather jackets here and I believe they're around 15 euros a piece, which is a great price, but they had this distinct vintage leather, like smelly smell, which is so hard to get out. Don't worry about the cold just yet. The trees haven't started to shed Just feel the summer sun these vintage maps and historic posters were nice but the condition was quite bad most of them had water damage or were torn or both I'm lying, and I'm lying. They have lots of oddities here, like this collection of random, very large farm animals and this vintage pinball machine. I have never seen a taxidermy butterfly collection anywhere this large. I have no idea where they got these from, but it was so stunning. They were all vintage and gorgeous, but quite pricey. The bigger domes were all way above 200 euros, but still so beautiful to look at. I mean, look at these blue ones. This bell jar is just fantastic. I finally found me some West German pottery. This is a nut bowl with small little bowls that usually come along with it, but the big bowl was chipped, as was this pretty fat lava pitcher vase. This brass horse is stunning, but six year olds is too steep for me to buy it and then resell it. Their shelves are filled with all kinds of little odds and ends and you're willing to x-ray vision them to see and kind of grasp everything there is. These ceramic wall sconce candle holders are pretty, but most of them have chips. I was thinking whether to get this muted one, but ended up putting it back. This was a tourist piece from Portugal. And I found a little bowl of the Ambacht Fallen Dom series, which are the dishes I collect 
but it was missing its lid and they had just put some random lid on it that wasn't even ceramic and didn't fit or match the bowl at all. Needless to say, I didn't buy it. They had a couple of shelves filled with colored glass, but they slapped quite a high price tag on them. And since I didn't know 100% certain whether any of these were actual Murano, I just admired them, but ended up putting them back. Some of them were cracked and chipped as well, which is kind of sad to be honest. This place was super interesting. I didn't buy anything because I felt like they put a lot of higher price tags on stuff, especially things that were cracked and stuff. They still ask like 10, 15 euros for them. I'm like, that's cracked and chipped and all of that. Like just because it says West Germany or it looks like it's mouth blown doesn't mean it's still worth that much if it's so damaged, but it's definitely an experience going in there. I don't know if I'm gonna be back to be honest. There are a couple things where I was considering, like, mm, should I get this, should I not? But honestly, I'm kind of happy that I didn't get anything there. Still heading to a few other stores. Who knows what's going to be there for me. I'm going to my favorite store. Last time I only bought, like, a case over there. But who knows, maybe today is going to be my lucky day where I find all the good stuff. I had almost picked up this vase in another video a while ago and I was tempted to pick it up for myself this time, but I did withstand the temptation and put it back on the shelf. Again, for the second time. Fireplace, do you know how? Pass the paper, my desk is out. Who care for the I was actually trying to get to the vase, but look at this creepy baby head. I, I just can't. I find it really scary. Anyways, the vase looked more like a hobbyist piece to me, so I did put it back on the shelf. This little litter box is a pretty neat find. I did buy this and I will tell you a little more about it in the haul portion of the video. Rest with me. Close to curtains. Some herbal tea. Yeah. These mugs were also hobbyist pieces, but still kind of cool. But my full cupboard says no, no to more mugs right now. Disagree. Another creepy head. I have no idea what was going on there that day. I like these types of chairs. Eventually, we do need new dining room chairs, but probably something a little bit different than this. Every time, and I mean every time I'm here, I check this wall because once I did buy a string shelf, they had hanging there, and every time since then, this wall has been empty. Even when I disagree, mm, rest Close to they have this whole corner of vintage nautical items there, which was pretty cool. But Hazel would have loved this book about Michiel de Reiter who was very famous during the colonial Dutch period. I only didn't get it because it was in German. Hey, my hand, lady, 
This painting was also so beautiful. I didn't get it because I wasn't sure whether this was like the 100% perfect chip painting I've been looking for. The more I look at it, the more I like it. It might be a future regret here. I'm off to another store. I actually found a couple of nice things. There were not a lot, but just a few things. And I'm actually going to the store that I went to I think a few weeks ago where they have like booths and stuff where you can also sell upstairs and they actually have the thrift store downstairs just curious whether they have some more good stuff in the booths because I found a few things there as well so I'm gonna head there right now I was at this point searching for the cheap booth I was talking about because I'd only been there once there are definitely some nice booths here but that one is just the best hands down and I found it. The first thing that caught my eye was this stunning West Germany bowl, which I knew even before picking it up was made by Dummler Breiden. It did have a very visible chip though, so I ended up putting it back. Then I spotted these fondue plates in the coolest colors ever. I just needed to get these. And they're also selling another one of these bowls. This one was so stunning and I just had to take it home with me. Um, and this vase? Yes, please! This was my lucky Germany pottery day. These finds made me so, so happy. I had initially picked up this beautiful fat lava bowl. I absolutely loved the wavy rim, but when I took a closer look, it did have a couple of visible chips and then, with a very heavy heart, I put it back on the shelf. This mug was also super cool. They were asking 5 euros, which is too much for me to resell it but it was speckled quite large and had some kind of viking ship on it. I liked it. This was another West Germany vase by Bai. I just love Bai. This one had a bunch of small chips around the upper rim and that's why I did get it. Still, 5 euro is a very good price if you just want to buy it to keep it for yourself. I don't remember why I didn't pick this up, but I think it was because it wasn't marked. It might have also been because I'm going to Germany soon for a full on day of thrifting and I'm pretty selective with all my purchases right now. I also bought a set of fat lava serving bowls from this seller. The rest of those dishes is still here. If any of you know this pottery mark, please let me know. It should be East, possibly West German, but I haven't been able to find out what it is. At this other booth, I found the Koi tea cups and saucers that I had spotted at another thrift store a while ago. They were only asking $2.75 for them, but I realized that these are transferware and not hand painted. The fish in the middle had already fainted quite a bit. I'm looking for a new living room rug. I did like the design of these, but they were just way too small. I had picked up Nomi from school and we had a one more store. This store only consists of little booths people can rent and most of the stuff is modern. I do like to come here to look for clothing for all of us. Sometimes they do have some nice vintage items. I spotted this vintage blazer and also tried it on. It was 50% off, but the inside was a little torn up. And to be honest, I have amassed quite a big two sew pile and I don't feel like adding onto it right now. I 
I did consider getting this pottery piece, but I ended up putting it back. However, I did get something else, which I will show you later in the haul. One of my pet peeves at thrift stores when stuff just slides off the hangers, I always put it back on, but it's just, it's just a little annoying. <laughs> This is kind of a cool set of Irish stoneware dishes. I didn't buy them because as I said, dishes take up a lot of space. I did like it though. And then Naomi showed me her pick of the day, which she ended up getting a spider that can draw. This thrift trip was so good and so successful. I'm so happy with the pieces that I found. Everything I found is for my Etsy shop. It's all linked down in the info box in case you're interested. I'm gonna hop right in and start with what I found at the first store. The first store has been one of my favorites for many, many years, for more than a decade. And the first two pieces I found is, is this set of two kind of trinket boxes and they are Norwegian, hand painted with those florals, very Nordic and Scandinavian very beautiful they were those kind of dark patterns which i really like i think they're stunning they still look really great from the inside i think somebody just maybe bought them on vacation and then displayed them in their house the other piece that i found at the store is something quite nice because it is something that has been made in this region and it is this little lidded box it is really nice it would be so nice to put your jewelry or necklaces in it's a ceramic box it is hand painted with a stunning bird floral pattern and it is aurora Vorkum friesland so i live in friesland which probably most of you don't know but it is pretty much one of the two northern provinces of the netherlands and this is really famous ceramics that were and i think still maybe are made here and this is a vintage piece it is an amazing condition it has no chips no cracks which i'm so excited about the second store that i went to is a thrift store but they also have this sort of thing upstairs where you can rent booths it's modern and vintage but there is this one booth in particular that i discovered maybe a month or so ago and they price their items really well by the way if the light is changing because i'm seeing that now on camera it's because the sun is not really cooperating with me right now so at that booth i found a few things the first one is this set of two vintage fondue plates 1970s this one is this amazing teal color this one is the very famous avocado green. They're both beautiful most of the time. I mean, I see a lot of fondue plates here. Like I could pick them up all day long, all day, every day. Most of them are just brown and kind of like just brown. <laughs> and that's why I leave them there. But these ones were so cool. There was a third one. Unfortunately, that one was checked. So I just got these two. They were two euros a piece. And I think I completely forgot to mention the price of this little box that I showed you. This one I paid four euros for. Maybe I also mentioned that. I don't know. I have terrible memory sometimes. As you all know, I'm... Oh, and these fondue plates are also West Germany. I have not been able to find out the maker yet, but the way they are marked, I am very certain that they were made there. And as you know, I am crazy about West Germany because I'm also German, but also the stuff there is just really good that they made back in the day. And the second piece that I'm showing you is a bowl, and it is this little handle bowl by Dummler and Breiden, and I actually have the exact same one in my kitchen. I use it as a spoon rest. Mine has a different pattern because they made this style in lots of different colors and patterns. I know I said I wouldn't pick up anything that is chipped. Um, it does have a very tiny chip here that is barely visible i still love this pattern so much i think the other one that was there was more chipped like really visibly chipped so i didn't get it but this one i couldn't leave behind it's teal i don't know what's up with the teal today because that is not a very common color but it is teal and this beautiful burnt orange with this um fat lava pattern inside i found this and this is a vase that is not made in West Germany, but this is East German by a company called Strela. I have a similar vase, also handled one by them as well. Mine is actually fat lava. This is not, this is just glaze, but stunning pastel colors like pastel pink and green. And then this blue accent with this kind of very abstract looking leaf. I think it's cool. It is actually marked a 985-1 and I love Strela. It's 
definitely my favorite East German company when it comes to ceramics. The last store I went to is not really a thrift store. It's also something where you can kind of just rent your own space and sell stuff. And pretty much 90% of everything you find there is vintage. And I didn't necessarily go there for buying stuff for my shop. I actually went there to check out some clothing for myself, which I didn't find anything. But also for my husband, which I did find some stuff, but I'm not gonna show that here. And also some things for my kids. And I found this planter there, which was very much a surprise to me. This is a also made in West Germany, even though it's just marked with a number. I know that these are made in West Germany. They are called Klinker style pottery, and it's because they're made of terracotta. And the decor they put on them, it kind of looks like somebody just kind of sliced into it. So this is called Ritz Decor. And this is nice. This is a really nice size planter, and it is really cool. And that's why I picked up, and this one was only $250. As I said, everything I'm showing today is going to go to my shop. If you like this video, make sure to check out these ones here on this side because I post videos about thrifting and second finds every single Tuesday. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do so you won't miss any of my other videos. I will see you in my next one. Have a great day. Bye!